All right. Yansu will be the first map of the day here in the Zotac NA Cup, guys. Let me make sure IEM's logo is not up. Okay, good. Because this is, of course, Zotac and nothing else. Uh, sadly, it is only a best of one, though, for those who are unfamiliar with the format. That's how Zotac rolls. Best of ones, best of ones until the quarterfinals when all the best of threes begin. But without further ado, spawning in the top right corner of the map, I present to you our blue Terran master known as Select. Of course, from the team Dignitas. And his opponent in the lower left, coming from Europe, playing on the North American server from the team My Insanity, give it up for the Red Protoss, Stardust. So, uh, reiterating for the VOD's sake real quick, guys, this is the second to last Zotac North American Cup ever. Uh, after, after January 25th, there will be no more. A little bit sad to see the North America lose their tournament, but they've had a great run. We've had some great, great games come from this tournament in the past. And more importantly than that, Base Trade TV was built out of Zotac NA. Like, when we first formed, there were no tournaments to cast that would accept us. Because who knew who we were but Zotac were gracious enough to take us on. So, uh, we will, again, celebrate these last two Zotacs together. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how sleep deprived I am. I will be here to cast this one and the next one. Uh, and if I can get anyone to co-cast me, more power to them. But I, at the very least, promise to uh, be here for you guys. Now... Real quick. Oh, sorry, one sec. <coughs> sorry, I had to take a cough there. Uh, one thing worth noting, Base Street TV is going to be throwing together a little bit of a tournament here on our own come in, uh, coming in February. The participant list from that will be taken directly from the signups of both the, this Zotac and the next Zotac. So basically, if you guys want a chance at $150 or possibly more, no promises, keep it a secret then uh, sign up for the next Zotac Cup for a chance to compete. But for now, we got a lot of really good players today, and I hope someone's updated the bracket list in chat. So love you very much if you did. But this is a match that, uh, like, I was kind of joking, but this is really like an IEM Stage 2 qualifier level ma like match. It kind of sucks that this is only a best of one. This really deserves to be a best of three, but, you know, there's so many good players playing today. Uh, some of them are unfortunately going to have to get knocked out early. Small shout out nod goes towards like, you know, Arthur, Suppy, Sage, most of Axiom. Like, we got a lot of great signups and a lot of good players for a very entertaining series to be played out today. And, uh, of course, as always, there's a hundred bucks, US dollars, up for grabs, winner take all, because that's how Zotac rolls. Select trying to keep this SCV around to see if Stargate comes down here or something quite silly, but uh, for now, Stardust is uh, just actually trying to hide the expansion he wants to take. Probe hiding down here so the SCV doesn't go kill her and block it. Reaper on the way. Going to be great for scouting. I don't know. Stardust is like the one Protoss 2 player who currently lives in Europe that doesn't play like he's from Europe. Like, oh. Oh, select. Okay, so what I'm hoping he does here. I was kind of curious about the SCV coming back here. Scouting out where Stardust has things down. He knows there's some dead space both up here and up here. Because he has seen the entire base of Stardust. What he may do is lift the factory, put it on this ledge, produce widow mines, and try and be a bit of a nuisance. Typically you do this like in a rush fashion and you don't get this reaper out. So for Stardust, there's no reason for him to suspect this is coming at all. This is, for all intents and purposes, your regular opener for a PvP. Uh, Selects even take an expansion behind this. I love this. This is great. The factory oftentimes just ends up floating around the map anyways and being used to no avail. Sometimes players will make wood mines defensively if there's like an all incoming or you know you make a siege tank if you gotta defend against blank. But because Select knows it's neither of those, he can safely put the factory over here and oh gonna get him jumps guys, I'm really excited about this because Stardust already scouted up here to see if anything was coming. He saw nothing, so he might think it's safe, but oh no the pilot select! Oh this is frustrating. So basically what can happen, you can still pump out with Widowmine. He should be able to get two out. Like, even if there weren't Reapers here to distract everything, he should still be able to get two Widowmines out bare minimum. Lift off and go away after if he needs to. Oh my god, is that bunker coming down for the Reapers to hide in to shoot away at the Nexus? Select is playing all the stops versus Stardust here, guys. And uh, the the tricks, the shenanigans. We'll see if he gets away with them. Hasn't killed anything to see with these Reapers, but of course, has to be careful. That one has almost no health. Uh, when the Widowmine comes out, it will not one-shot a Mothership Core, but it can one-shot a Stalker, which is a really big deal. Obviously, preferable is to get into that uh, mineral line if it allows you, but it looks like... Oh, pops the Overcharge here, drives the Reapers back, shuts down the Widowmine, and looks like Select is going to hop into this bunker here and uh, continue being a nuisance. He's got a couple Marines coming across the map here, too, so may just be able to shut this down. Oh, that Reaper barely got inside that bunker with, like, barely one health alive. Second bunker looks like it will fall, and the factory has been lifted. Now what Select could do too is uh, put a reactor down and start making hellings if you wanted to, but the Stalker's going across the map, going to make this a little bit finicky here for Stardust, who, or sorry, for Select, who does not currently have enough to defend against three Stalkers. Even with his bunker down, he may just very well walk past them and go towards the main. So Select's going to have to really pool his resources. 
If he can knock down this, oh my god, he's actually moved the factory back to the main to start building uh, Widow Mines once again. Really cool there. Anyways, four Marines are not going to hold against us. He may need to pull some SCVs. As we see the Sockers get low, and here come the SCVs to be pulled. Marines being produced at two at a time should be enough as long as he holds the ramp for now. But uh, what's really key behind this is with those extra Widow Mines coming out, there's no way to shut this bunker down, which means there's no way to save this Nexus, which means Stardust pretty much knows he's lost that. Uh, Soccer does go down, and uh, a couple of SCVs to go hand in hand with it. But Select is a whole base over his opponent now, which is a really, uh, really big advantage coming into mid game here. Stardust, however, continuing to uh, warp in Stalkers, getting the Immortal out. I mean, his goal is obviously going to be to bust that bunker, and unfortunately for him, there's an Observer out. So, Widowmine's not going to get a lot done. Again, if you can sneak this into the mineral line, more power to you. You're going to get a lot of probe kills, without question. But with the Immortal coming, as well as these Stalkers, this bunker is going to die. And what's more scary than that is the fact that Select doesn't really have a whole lot of home still. He lost a lot of SCVs, a good handful of Marines. He doesn't have like four bunkers down. So push out of uh, push out of Stardust. Well, he sees it coming. He knows exactly what's on the way. Bunkers at the front coming down. Um, these are not going to finish in time. Like these really needed to be up here. I think he can always pull up and lift his base if he needs to. Not enough Marines. There's a medevac out. We'll see if he can hold this. If Stim was done, this would be another question. But because Stim is not finished, going to be somewhat limited on what he can do. Uh, Reapers are going to try to get the middle line, but the Stalker will be able to push these back. Select, of course, not microing these. Uh, too busy about the push coming, rightfully so. SCVs are ready, already pre-pulled. Uh, looks like this one bunker will go down by the by the looks of things, and the Marauders loaded up here. So he's got two bunkers to hold with. Select doesn't have to worry about force fields. He's got that much going for him. His production is coming out. Mm, I'm a little bit worried though. This is still not looking too great. This bunker busting force is looking quite scary. <laughs> Someone in chat's thinking about ripping out Select this field. Yeah, I am. I'm guilty, cheeky bugger. Love doing uh, proxy wood mines when and where applicable, but uh, I'm unable to really just get this full wall up here. Uh, he's gonna bust down the rocks, and as we see, Immortals, of course, do a lot of damage versus armored things. Like buildings are all armored as well. Gets the Observer, nice little snipe there. Nothing crazy comes of that, though, because he doesn't have any stealth units, no Banshee and no Widowmines back at home, but relying purely on bunkers for defense at the moment. Lots of Marauders here. Stim's still not quite done yet. The Immortals are in a lot of danger if Stim finishes. Like, this push out of Stardust might just not work out. He's tried to take his natural behind this, so it's not an all-in. He didn't put a pylon on the front lines. This was just some pressure to really scare Select, and... Let's be honest, it kind of scared Select. It, it prompted a lot of bunkers to be built. He's going to need to salvage these in a moment's time, of course. And this factory is just scouting around, chilling for the time being. The fact overlord. Uh, a full drop has been loaded up while this is going on, too. And we actually have Blink coming out of Stardust. So most likely going to be making his advanced tech Colossus over, over Templar. That will be pretty cool. You guys hear me kind of stuttering and stepping around right now. I'm just actually really excited about the way this game opened. Like, you have no idea. I love Proxy Widow Mines. Uh, Josh, she was the first person I ever saw do proxy wind mines, fell in love with them after that. Ooh, nice snipe on the mothership core. We'll get out alive with this drop, but that's actually pretty big because while he didn't kill an immortal or a zealot by any means, didn't kill any probes, but now there's no more chance of an overcharge. So actually dropping towards the main becomes a much more viable option. And uh, you know, I said it was gonna be Colossus, but if I take that back, we got uh, armor tech coming. A little curious about this. Typically, you pair weapons up with this. Not that armor is ever bad, especially against a player who's got a lot of marines, but uh, strange to see nonetheless. Blink is going to add a lot of maneuverability, but of course Marauders with Stim are just going to shut Blink Stalkers down if they take a fight. Concussive Shell is on the way too. This is shaping up to be a pretty darn good game for Select. Uh, one thing I'm a little bit scared about though is, as we see, his engineering base is only just finishing. He doesn't have upgrades on the way. His barracks really need to be like 6 instead of 3. Not that he can afford it because he's pumping a lot of units. Um, but his worker counts a little bit behind. Difference made up by mules, not a big deal. Pushing into this base though just seems to be a... Uh, not possible. He's gonna have to split. He's gonna have to split uh, Stardust forces. The best way to do that is gonna be through dropping. Nice sniping that observer. Might as well not even be cloaked. Jesus. Um, three medevacs certainly can give him the capability to uh, poke around. Actually, he somehow doesn't lose that marine. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, triple drop loaded up. If he draws the entire attention of Stardust over to the main. You know, he can push into the natural, and all he needs to do is kill a ton of probes to get a good spot. Stardust, however, you know, I'm talking a lot about Select here. Stardust has to be very careful. He has to make sure he doesn't undersplit his forces in order to deal with this. And uh, moving forward here with some of these stalkers, blinks back immediately. He says, wait, wait, where's that army? Where's it at? Realizes, oh my god, it's in the main. He's gonna try and snipe off a couple zealots as he moves on through here. Charge lots on the way. And uh, we do have the Colossus Bay being made. We'll see how much damage gets done here. Beautiful Blake by Crown of Stardust. Keeping these Stalkers alive. Even though they really should have died. There's a cannon added some damage to this fight. And of course Stardust is going to focus on the Medivacs. So Select cannot get out alive. But while this happens, he moves in towards the natural. But not towards the mineral line. So not a lot of damage getting done on either front. And Select actually 
Oh god, so luck just kind of threw away so much army value for that. I uh, can't blame him. A for effort. Stardust had really great control in that engagement. Really love that blink on those stalkers. Like, number one. Number one priority there is keeping those alive, but... Completely wrong was I. We got Colossus coming out, but it's also going to be charged last. So I guess not completely wrong, but like half wrong. We don't actually have uh, too much being dedicated into that. Wants to see if this third base. There is, in fact, no third base. We're trying to snipe up a couple more stalkers here, but with the Immortal Gun, he's going to need to get out of dodge. Yeah, blink step forward here. So just go to select vision for a sec. Um, yeah, this is that problem I was talking about. His production's a little bit lackluster right now. Uh, with the Colossus being produced here in a moment's time, I don't think select... No, I did not see this, or the additional four gateways coming down. So, ah, uh, I fear he might not have the Viking count to deal with this appropriately. I mean, he's really going to need to pump a lot of Vikings if he wants to stay in this game. Uh, simply doing Marine Marauder Harass is not going to cut it, not like this. Uh, we'll lift up one Meta Ekfoli units, but these other four are going to awkwardly die. Take out a Zealot with them, but hey does what he can. Saw the third base on the way here too. Back at home though, we look at the army of supply of select. It's not exactly through the roof, but neither is Stardust. Like, Stardust's army composition is just really strong for how, how low this unit count is, and that's what's keeping select from getting a lot of damage done, a lot of harass done. Uh, first Colossus does get produced, and of course no Thermal Lance just yet, but it should be done by the time the next engagement happens. Um, uh, yeah, Select's upgrades still lacking a little bit here on one, coming up on level one armor upgrades as well. No double engineering bay. Trying to compete with level two armor upgrades is going to be a bit of a task to say the least. There's so many zealots available. No Ghost Academy in sight, so what if you see this observer? Select has uh, seen almost every observer this game except for these two, but okay, it's still fine. Uh, this drop looks like it wants to elevate her up if it can, but the army is of course here and waiting. Select. Pushing towards the south, maybe able to just try and catch his opponent off guard. You know, draw the attention to Stardust, keep him focused here on the third, and then push into the natural with a really big force. Oh, doesn't get the pylon! Oh, that's heartbreaking! Meanwhile, Slex says, alright, let's try and do what we can, charge towards the natural. There's not enough marauders here to focus down, unfortunately. Because typically that's what you'd love to do, just snipe off the Nexus, but instead finding himself in a very awkward spot, sees the Immortal, sees the Colossus, and stims right back out of there. Uh, Zelda the Watchtower, of course, saw this coming, so unfortunately for Select, did not quite get the cheeky bugger effect of sneaking in behind uh, Stardust's back. Drop here to the... Oh, God, Marauder's dying in such a gruesome way. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> so then you get sliced and diced, literally. Viking's on the way, but he's not got that second starport. It's just one, and again, I hearken back to the fact that Select might just not have the production to deal with this right now. A little bit worried, a little bit concerned. Small run by here towards the third. Will be shut down by the army meeting it right away. You know, it's interesting. You think look at the workers lost so far this game, guys. Realistically, for both players, it hasn't exactly been anything too insane. Uh, most of the SCVs that were killed early on were the ones that were pulled against this uh, little push earlier on. So, a very, very... Um, how do I phrase this? A, a quick defensive game, I guess. Uh, just quick to defend the probes, quick to react to pushes, to drops. No one really getting caught too off guard. So Lex sees this giant army at his doorstep, though, beckoning in, and this is where it gets a little bit scary, because, again, there's only two Vikings here. The Colossus do have extended Thermal Lance. The Stardust could push with a great force. Dealing with this is not going to be easy. There's so much area of effect that Select's going to have to worry about. If he fights near a ramp, he might just walk into a choke. Saw the Observer should be able to scan it again to snipe it. There you go. Uh, but with the Blink Stalkers, it's going to be nearly impossible to keep these uh, these Vikings alive or safe, for that matter. Loses one immediately. Drop towards the third. We'll find a double drop towards the third. We'll find a lot of probes to be killed. This is going to drop back a Colossus and even a full recall here out of Stardust. Which is actually really good for Select, because now you can take a breather and be like, okay, that army is not pushing to my natural. I've got time to get more Vikings up. And quite frankly, that's what he's trying to do. Second starport was made with a reactor, so he's got four Vikings coming out at a time. Uh, this is, like, a little bit concerning, though, still. Um... The Blink Stalker count's really high. Like, typically, you know, as a channel player, you'd love to whittle down the Stalker, spoke at him with the Marauders, but Stardust has been so good with his Blink Micro, he hasn't really allowed Select to pick much off. Still checking for Observers, and we finally have a Templar transition coming out here. Sunny Storm on the way. So two layers of AoE going to be difficult to deal with. No Ghosts in sight for Select, but he's trying to get that Ghost Academy up so he'll be able to make them. And uh, I've been talking nonstop. Give me one sec here just to drink some water, guys. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Um, anyways, there's still an observer in the main here from Stardust, just kind of chilling and watching what's going on. Uh, as far as Select's concerned, though, I like his production a lot more than it was earlier. Factory landed. Hell, a Widow Mine or two wouldn't be too bad if for nothing else scouting information. It's not going to get a lot of damage done. This medevac will get feedback. Oh my god, with five health, it barely lives. Select 
Almost getting caught off guard by that. Would have been really disheartening to see that go down. Then next time lives though. And this one person takes one being select. We'll not see this coming until it's too late, I'm afraid, guys. Four zealots and how many gateways to warp in with? Seven at a time. This is going to be frustrating. His production is not coming out of the barracks. He is actually maxed out. He cannot deal with this. He's gonna lose some SCVs. Vikings have fully been brought back towards the main. He's gonna try and hunt down that warp if he can be afforded the opportunity. Now uh, we see the Vikings trying to move out to intercept, but they will not get there in time. Uh, instead, just has to deal with what's going on in the main. A little bit frustrating, but you know what? He responds to this pretty good. Doesn't lose too much. Command center and the SVs actually live. And again, not the most economically devastating game for either player. For select, though, he's got a lot of army units that are going to be, um, to steal a phrase here, useless. Uh, he's really needing to get those ghosts out as soon as he can. And the problem is he doesn't want to wait till like, he has to remax to get them. So four ghosts coming out right now. Killed off a couple units. Hopefully, hopefully, he can get those EMPs out in order to deal with uh, Stardust's army. But Stardust is pretty well fortified. He's got Templar over here to catch uh, Storm slash Feedbacks. He's got cannons around the base. Make sure no free units die. Uh, we'll try and get a storm off. Gets a pretty decent storm off, but Celeste explodes pretty much immediately. Viking count here is really scary because all he needs to do is bulldog down the Colossus. After that, he can always land them if he wants to, but this is so many Templar for Stardust. He's got so much area of effect involved with this army. Templar Storm's obviously going to try and hit those Vikings as they do clump up, but there's, again, so many Templar. This is looking a little bit scary for Select, guys. Storm's blanketing everything, and he's not even out of Storm's just yet. He's going to lose so much here on the front lines. These Marauders, these Marines all going down for nothing, for not. They will die behind the mineral line. Zealot's actually walking into his own Storm, but Stardust says, you know what? Whatever, I'm okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, he did manage to slap an EMP down on some of these units. It looks like the Vikings will target the Colossus. But there's no ground army here for Select. He just lost everything to that. So if he takes out the Colossus, that's great. That's cool. That's dandy. But he's got to get these units out to defend. Five ghosts coming out at a time. Uh, if he had Cloak, does he have Cloak? He doesn't have Cloak. So these are not exactly going to be the most effective five, uh, five ghosts you've ever seen. This base may need to just be evacuated right now, lest it be completely lost. Lifting up is not going to be an option. Small amount of Stalkers and I guess another War Prism heading towards the main. Oh, Select is just going to have to forfeit one, maybe even two bases here. Uh, so Vikings and Ghosts are actually this really pent-ultimate composition for Terran versus Protoss, guys. But the problem is you really need Cloak to go hand-in-hand hand with this. EMPs alone will not cut it. Coming here on the front lines, we do have these Ghosts ready to drop the EMPs. But there's not enough Marines or Marauders to add spice to this fire. Um, where's that War Prism? Okay, not in the main. I thought it was going towards the main. Vikings are landed trying to hold the line here, but this is not looking good for Select. More EMPs need to go Select. Oh, he needs to put these down on the Archons right now. Takes the Archons out immediately. Some great Select. Uh, sorry, Focus Fire from Select, but unfortunately for him, the Storms are still looking pretty good. Loses his natural, loses his fourth, loses his third. Good game is going to be called, and Stardust will take the game. But my oh my, did Select put on quite a show.